Hi, this is Krista from Sci5. I'm really excited to talk to you today about the second generation of our intelligence family products. As many people have noticed, RISC-V and AI go together very naturally. Uh, the open standard RISC-V model provides a standard base upon which people can build custom extensions which are necessary to get the performance needed for the rapidly evolving AI algorithms. So when we look at RISC-V adoption, uh, we see that AI is really one of the drivers for RISC-V adoption. The ability of RISC-V to be extended and add new uh, extensions to accelerate key kernels in AI has been one of the attractive features. That's something we built into RISC-V from the very beginning, the ability to extend and customize uh, for given use cases. The other part of RISC-V as well, though, is uh, software is a key aspect. And so with RISC-V, we have a standard architecture embodied in the RVA23 profile uh, for application processes. And so you can build your customized innovation on top of a standard base. So most of the software you need will be there and running on the standard base, but then you can extend it with the features you need uh, to accelerate these AI algorithms. And this is what's really driving the interest in RISC-V together with this open model where there's no fees to license the base ISA. So at Sci-Fi, we saw this interest in RISC-V and AI, and four years ago, we introduced the first generation of our intelligence family, beginning with the X280 core, which was in the X200 series. Um, this is an efficient scalar core coupled with a wide vector unit. And we found this was being adopted in a lot of places, many design wins uh, being used in AI SOCs. Um, subsequently, we introduced the Hans Performance X390 in the X300 series, which is a wider vector unit, more vector compute, and more recently, we introduced the XM series, which combines four of the X390 cores together with a large matrix engine to provide very high performance acceleration for key AI kernels. So if you look across the family, you see that there's a roughly a 4x improvement in performance as we go from the, the smaller to the larger members of the family. And in addition, we can add arrays of these uh, cores to get even higher throughput for a given application need. We introduced the Sci-5 intelligence family over four years ago, and we've seen very strong adoption with over 40 design wins in applications ranging from edge AI to data center infrastructure. So we're happy today to introduce the second generation of the intelligence family based on the feedback from our customers and looking at new applications. One of the key new entrants in the family is our low end X100 series core, where we had a lot of demand for very low area, very efficient cores uh, to service edge AI needs. We're also upgrading and refreshing the other members of the family with a bunch of new features and new performance and area improvements that we'll be talking about later. So at Sci5, as we engage with customers on the previous generation intelligence family, we found there were two primary use cases uh, for the cores. One was to provide a standalone edge AI vector processing capability, where we'd use the accelerated vector engine to provide the throughput needed for edge AI models. Um, but an interesting other use case we saw was where the customer would use the intelligence core to connect to their own custom accelerator, where it will provide control and assist functions for that customer's own accelerator IP. And so this is one of the reasons we introduced the lowest end member of the family, the X100 series, where customers want a, a small efficient core, where most of the compute is actually being done by an accelerator attached to the core. Uh, but the X100 core is providing these control and assist functions to simplify integration of that accelerator into the system level SOC. So let's dive in and take a look how customers attach accelerators into their systems and why they were so attracted to the X200, X300 series cores. Traditionally, when an accelerator is attached into a system, often there is some kind of specialized state machine or control logic uh, driving the accelerator and possibly some DMA engines to move data in and out into the accelerator compute portion. But these are typically quite cumbersome to program and very unique to each accelerator. And this adds a lot of burden to both the software complexity on the host, but also a lot of overhead for the host CPU to manage at low level the functions of the accelerator. Now, if we take a look how customers are using our intelligence cores with their accelerators, what they're doing is taking their custom logic and now attaching it to the intelligence core, where the intelligence core is providing control and assist functions. So now, instead of a state machine, the host processor is interacting with another RISC-V processor that's managing the detailed operation of the accelerator, offloading the host CPU from that function. This also provides a standard RISC-V software environment in which to program new functions and updates the accelerator over time. Another important aspect of the intelligence cores is that they have sufficient compute functionality through the attached vector units 
that they can offload or provide new functionality that was not envisaged when the custom accelerator was originally developed. Um, so over time, as new algorithms come along, some of those new functions can now be performed by the intelligence core, providing a backup to the customer's accelerator. And so these are the reasons uh, we saw a lot of interest in this accelerator companion model for our intelligence cores. So we're seeing very strong interest in the use of our intelligence cores in this companion role, where they're tied with a custom accelerator provided by the customer. So let's take a deep dive into the newest member of the intelligence family, which is our X100 series. So there are two basic members of this family, X160, X180, where the X160 has a 32-bit address space architecture, where the X180 is a 64-bit architecture. Both of them have a dual issue in order to scale a pipeline, so very efficient. And in addition, have a vector pipeline, which provides that assist functionality to the coprocessor where needed. Um, to connect to the coprocessor, there are two high-performance coprocessor interfaces. One of them is VCIX, which is the vector coprocessor interface extension that we previously introduced. And this provides very high bandwidth access to the vector register files, so you can ship data to and from the custom accelerator and then process the data using vector instructions before sending it to and from memory. The second interface is the SSCI, uh, which is the Sci-5 Scale-Up Coprocessor interface. Uh, this provides a narrower command bus that's useful for sending instructions and commands over to customers' custom IP. So this combination of fast scalar compute, vector assist functionality, and the fast coprocessor interfaces, this is the, the key aspects of this new product, the X100 series, and also making it available in a much smaller uh, footprint for these edge AI applications. Although we've emphasized the use of these cores as a companion to custom accelerator logic, they're also very capable AI engines themselves to run models at the edge. And so in this comparison, we're showing our core against the competing core, and we're seeing on a range of inference tasks, we're getting roughly twice the throughput in around the same area. So even ahead of the product launch, we've been talking to uh, various companies and happy to report that two large tier one US semiconductor companies have licensed the X100 series cores for two different application use cases. So on the one hand, one of the companies is using the X100 by itself for edge AI applications, where they need to run a wide range of models across different applications on the same SOC. The second company is taking the X100 core, combining it with their own custom accelerator logic, and using this across a wide family of different SOCs targeting different application domains. So now let's take a look at the uh, existing members intelligence family and the improvements we've made to them for the second generation. So the X280 core was a very popular core in our first generation, and the improvements we've made have focused on new instruction extensions, also improvements to the memory system, and provide even deeper memory latency tolerance. Another important feature is adding the new Sci-Fi Scalar coprocessor interface as a second way to connect to coprocessors. Similarly, with the wider X390 core, uh, we've done the same kind of upgrades, new instruction extensions, improved memory subsystem performance, and adding the SSCI interface to it. Finally, we have the XM member of the intelligence family. Uh, this is where we add a very high performance matrix engine to the scalar vector cores. So in the second generation of XM, the improvements have been around supporting new data types, um, but also we've done a lot of performance tuning to make it work better with large language models. So we support our AI hardware products with a very comprehensive software stack for mapping AI models. Um, so the tooling we provide allows you to take AI models and map them down to either a bare metal runtime environment or a Linux runtime environment running on our cores. We allow you to optimize the layers using the vectorizer in the LLM compiler or by linking in our very high performance hand-tuned SKL kernel libraries that provide key functions at very high throughput on our cores. To help customers understand the performance implications, we have a high-level analyzer that lets people look at the model and analyze it at a very high level to look for performance hotspots when running on our hardware. There's also a lot of integration with existing open source software stacks that we provide to make it easy for customers to leverage uh, industry standard open source frameworks to map models onto our Sci-5 hardware. So that was a quick view of each of the members of the family. Here's the whole family again. So there's obviously many upgrades and many new features, but just to highlight four key new features in the family, one is the introduction of the Sci-Fi Scalar Coprocessor interface for that control and assist use case. The second is a lot of improvements to the memory system. Third is hiding of memory latency. And finally, there's a large set of uh, new instruction set extensions to help with AI algorithms. So now let's take a closer look at those four key new features in the second generation intelligence family. And the first of those is the new accelerator interfaces. 
So the SSCI is a Scala coprocessor interface, and this allows the CPU to generate custom instructions and send them over to the customer's IP, including register values from the Scala registers on the CPU. We already had the VCIX interface, the vector coprocessor interface extension, and this allows instructions to be sent over together with data coming in and out of the vector register files. So depending on the use case, customers may use one or either or both of these to connect their accelerator to the SciFive core. So let's dive down and see how the second generation coprocessor interface are used in practice. So here we have an example where the customer is attaching their own custom logic to our SciFive X100 series core. So they're using the SSCI interface to drive command and control registers in the coprocessor, and they're using the vector PCIX interface to drive vector data to and from the accelerator. So remember, the vector unit on the X100 core can do a comprehensive set of vector loads and stores in and out of memory and send the packed data over to the customer coprocessor and also perform pre- and post-processing of that data before it gets to the accelerator. So this provides a very powerful combination of features that are all programmable through a standard RISC-V software environment. In the memory subsystem, uh, one of the efficiency improvements we've made is to remove a level of the memory hierarchy. In the first generation X200 series cores, every core had a private level one and private level two, and they shared a level three cache that was inclusive. In the second generation of the cores, we've now moved to a model where there's a single level one cache plus a shared L2 across all the cores in a cluster. And we actually get higher performance and lower area from this configuration. So as an example of the kind of instruction set extensions we've added, um, we can take a look at the exponential function. Um, so we've added hardware that allows us to execute exponentials of full throughput, fully pipelined across the vector unit. And this takes the time to execute an exponential function from 15 cycles down to a single cycle throughput on that exponential function. And this is a key operation that's needed for many of the popular AI activation functions today. So we've designed the second generation of the intelligence family to scale across a very broad range of applications from the X100 core in deep embedded, all the way up to the XM series, which can be arrayed to provide very high AI throughput in a data center application, as well as using the cores by themselves to provide the AI throughput. As we mentioned, the very popular use of these cores is for customers to add their own acceleration. And so when customers do that, obviously they can hit very high performance levels targeted for their specific use cases. So just to summarize, we presented the second generation of the sci 5 intelligence family today. This is really addressing the need we see for customers to have a cores that provide a scalable mix of scalar, vector, and matrix compute. But in addition, customers are looking for a core to which they can attach their own custom acceleration, all while being driven by a standard RISC-V software stack. In the second generation of the intelligence family, we've added a new small member, the X100 series, that attacks both 32-bit address space as well as 64-bit embedded applications. The entire family from the X100 all the way up to the larger cores provides support for attaching coprocessors through the new SSCI scalar coprocessor interface as well as the vector coprocessor interface. There's been improvements made to the memory subsystem in terms of configuration and throughput. And we've added a bunch of new instruction set extensions to support AI functionality. So we've been very excited seeing how our customers use the first generation of our intelligence products to combine RISC-V and AI for a whole bunch of interesting applications. So now with the second generation, we've made a whole bunch of improvements in performance, efficiency, adding new features. And so we look forward to seeing how our customers are going to use this second generation. And the great news is it's all available to license for production today. So this has just been a very quick introduction to our second generation intelligence product family. Please watch out for our follow-on videos where we go into more depth on various aspects of the hardware and software supporting our family.